in the last couple of days there is one paper that has caught my attention and a lot of people's attention and that paper is self rewarding self rewarding language models it is a paper from new york university and also meta ai why is this paper interesting is what i was trying to delve dive deeper into the main thing here is uh, as the title suggests you might have already guessed it that this is a paper that talks about models rewarding itself so the concept reward comes from reinforced model learning but why is it interesting why is everybody talking about it the first reason is if you think about large language models people are building a lot of large language models and one problem is still there and that problem is alignment so how do you make these models as good as human beings or how do you make these models value human values this is a question that everybody has been trying to solve that is one of the biggest bottleneck in fact a lot of times open ai has been blamed for lobotomizing the model by doing rlhf reinforcement learning from human feedback and in the last few weeks or i should say few months there is another very popular technique that has risen up to the level where rlhf may not be very important yet so that new technique is called dpo direct preference optimization so it has got a preference pair or a preference data set and based on which the model has been trained or aligned or fine tuned so whatever that is the final stage is dpo now what this paper is trying to do is this paper is saying that you do not need humans at all even to generate the preference data set you can skip humans i mean a little bit of human is required for the seed data set but you can skip humans a rest of the process you can have model 0 build model 1 based on it build model 2 based on it build model 3 based on it and this model 3 like let's say llama 2 70 billion parameter model would be as good as mistral medium so this is a very huge claim and i want to dive deeper into how they go bent about it and what this paper is suggesting first of all this is still experimental i don't see like a data or a model for us to play with it so take it with a pinch of salt so the first thing is what is this paper this is self rewarding language models in this study or in this work they are talking about a self rewarding language model where the language model itself is used as an llm as a judge and this is not the first time we are seeing llm as a judge llm as a judge is a very popular concept in fact a lot of popular benchmarks use gpt4 as a judge for example i think mt bench maybe if i'm right mt bench uses gpt4 to ultimately score the llm responses so there are a lot of benchmarks and a lot of existing techniques that use one of the best models like gpt4 to score the response so llm as judge is a very popular concept so they are using llm as a judge prompting to provide its own rewards during the training so we show that iterative dpo direct preference optimization training not only does instruction following ability improve but also the ability to provide high quality rewards to itself this is the main impact the most important thing of this paper is that they figured out that the it's not only the instruction following ability improves but also to provide high quality rewards to itself like to the model in itself so fine tuning llama to 70 billion on three iterations like i said m0 is the base model m1 m2 m3 of our approach yields a model that outperforms many existing systems on alpaca evil 2.0 leaderboard including claw 2 gemini pro and gpt4 0613 the latest version i guess while only a preliminary study this work opens the door to the possibility of models that can continually improve in both axes now one thing to note is a uh, very later somewhere in this they also acknowledge that this system may not hold entirely true or may not scale up in the real world scenario because sometimes it might saturate see at the end of the day you are using a base model to reward or create instruction data set and then reward the model so how much it would scale in the real environment i think that is something that we need to see whether it is going to saturate whether you know after a point it just goes garbage in garbage out that is not something that we know yet but yeah we have a model that can do certain things how does it work there are two main steps one is the self instruction creation the second one is the instruction following training so you have got a model t and you have got model t plus 1 
So always remember the model T plus one uses the data and the rewards generated by model T. So model T is like model zero and model one is M1 is created from the data that is let's say created from model zero and what kind of data that it creates is the main thing. So it tries to create a couple of things for, or at least the steps. The first one is an instruction following step. The second one is a self instruction creation step. And, uh, and that is where the concept of AI feedback comes into picture and AI feedback data set AI FT also will come into picture. And if you are familiar with this channel, uh, you might have already seen that we have covered a different technique called RL AIF. So RLHF reinforcement learning from human feedback is a technique where human beings sit, read the question, quote the response or score the response and then give it back. And that goes back to the reward training for the model and using reinforcement learning, the model is improved. RLAIF is taking the human out of the loop and then putting an AI there and to reward. So this, the paper also acknowledges like later in this paper, you would also see that they would have acknowledged that there are techniques like RLAIF that is already available where uh, the model has been used as a, as a reward, uh, you know, the scoring mechanism. But if you see here, what is the model is creating? So the model is first trying to create a couple of things. One, they're creating, uh, they're starting. So the first thing is you have a base model. You have a base model. And uh, as you can see in the setup, you have a base model. And uh, the model then what it tries to do is it tries to use a seed data for instruction fine tuning. And this is the only place where human beings data is used like, uh, or I mean, technically the base model also has got human data, but this is this is where the human authored examples are used and uh, from that that is what they're calling as sft baseline and from that is now you have a new set of data called eft C data now what is eft this is evaluation data so anytime uh, ift is created ift is there uh, the model m0 is used uh, to create something new and that is how the eft comes into picture that is the evaluation. So I think it comes from IFT in and itself. So you can see here that this results in 1775 train and 531 evaluation. And uh, they're also looking at the distributions to make sure that these do not overlap. So if you see here at the end, you can see here. So they have created a TSNE. It's a very popular technique to cluster things. So you have got the IFT data. You've got the AIFT data and then you've got the EEFT data. So the distribution, the, it shows that when the distribution of IEFT and EFT are separate, that means the, the, the overlap is less. So the concept of overfitting or uh, leakage, uh, benchmark, <laughs> breaking on all these things reduce. So, so this distribution, uh, good on them that they have managed to do it. Now, how is it working? So like we discussed, like there is a seed model, there is a set of new prompts that generates the responses. And from that, there is a new set of rewards that are created. And then from that, the preference pairs are created. And then there is an iterative DPO that creates the new model in itself. And then it continues. Uh, so M0, M1, then M2 and M3. And you can see how the responses are created. So this is a sample prompt. And uh, it basically says, okay, review the user question at the response. But the main thing is, okay, conclude the score in this particular format and you can also give the score and what is like, how do you score it? So this is basically given to the model for it to give you the response. And this is the LLM as a judge prompt. So this is how the LLM as a judge is. And if you see the model sequence, the iterative training, you have got the M0, the base model, the LLM base model, the Llama 2 L 70 billion parameter model without any fine tuning at all. Initialized with Llama sorry, initialized with M0 or in this case, Llama 2, 70 billion, then fine tuned on IFT and EFT seed data during SFT. During the supervised fine tuning process, they used the IFT instruction fine tuning data set and the evaluation fine tuning data set to make sure that the model is instruction fine tuned. And that is your M1. Now that M1 initialized and then trained with AIFT M1 data using DPO. How is this AIFT created? And that is what is this? This is the AIFT comes from there. And that is what is used to train the model. And then you have got one more step of you creating an M3. So what they have figured out is that when you have this kind of models, like from the base model, the EFT plus IFT supervised fine tuning, then the iteration two and the iteration three, 
you could see the model's win rate increases. So you can see, let's say this is the, the when you compare it with the SFT baseline, this is the M1 model, this is the M2 model, and this is the M3. I feel like almost I'm dealing with Apple MacBook. So you have got M1, M2, M3, and you can see that in every iteration, the self reward win rate actually increases. And uh, you can also see here that uh, if you have got different models, this is on Alpaca Evil 2.0 data set. So if you've got different models like GPT-4, 0314, 22.07, Mistral medium 21.86 Claude 2 and everything is below this so now honestly like this is something to be happy about but um, I'm a little skeptical at this point because this is particularly looking at only one data set I'm still not very sure about how much of this is maybe an overfitting that we have not figured out. I know that they have done distribution separately. I know that they are showing that the over distribution doesn't overlap between IFT, AIFT and EFT. So IFT and AIFT actually overlaps, which is like what you would expect because IFT is human generated data and AIFT is non-human generated data. So the fact that these two are in the same distribution actually tells you that AIFT is almost like IFT, So which, which is a good thing. E I E F T stays outside of this distribution, which is also a good thing because that's how you evaluate it. But what is my concern is that whatever we are doing, we are we, the, at least this paper is primarily on only one data set. I mean, it's it's good to be happy. I'm happy that we are going to take humans out of the equation, but I'm not sure how much of this iterative development is either because there is something better happening or because Alpaca Evil 2.0 data set has something that, you know, maybe we couldn't have um, figured out. Say I come from a classical machine learning background and a uh, lot of times we have had like a lot of, you know, interns and beginners joining the company and then they would say that, okay, every time I, I'm trying to add a new column and then train the model, the model security is increasing. And that would always give me the skepticism to say that, okay, Maybe you know what there is a noise that the model is trying to learn and that is what it is understanding a signal and it is ultimately overfitting. So I'm not exactly sure whether it is overfitting here. I'm happy that it is a self rewarding model and the improvement is happening. But because it is improving at every single iteration that gives me a little bit of skepticism and that is exactly why I told you also to take the results with a pinch of salt because it's one evaluation benchmark Alpaca Evol 2.0 and it is the same model and which generates different um, the EIFT data set and then it kinds of uh, you know DPOs iteratively on it and the results are promising um, I think the paper is promising everybody's been talking about it I think whenever you take humans out of equation uh, there is a bunch of AI enthusiasts who are very happy but um, but how is it going to translate in real world is something that I am definitely interested in learning about. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, this is a very fun paper to read. See you in another video. Happy prompting.